Welcome to another lecture on this subject of uh, simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. We were in the last lecture talking about matrix multiplications and uh, now we will talk about uh, the idea of eigenvalues, eigenvectors and uh, their importance or uh, how do eigenvalues and eigenvectors help us. So, for that let me first talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors and then we will talk about uh, their importance. So, eigenvalues and so the question is what is an eigenvalue or an eigenvector. So, for a matrix, matrix A, a vector x is called its eigenvector if Ax equals lambda times x that is upon linear matrix a vector x is not rotated but just scaled. So, basically the coordinates of the vector of observation to A. So, this is a geometrical interpretation of eigenvectors that uh, a linear transformation basically rotates the entire basis. You can uh, think of this in three dimensions, but when we have an eigenvector even if we rotate the basis with respect to A, the relative position of the entries of x remains unchanged or uh, equal to the previous values and uh, this is called an eigenvector of x. Now, lambda is called the corresponding eigenvalue of a. So, lambda is called the corresponding eigenvalue of a lambda is called the eigenvalue of A x lambda is called the eigenvalue of A corresponding to x fine. Now, two questions that would naturally arise one how do we find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for matrix to sure these look interesting but how or why are they Important to this discussion on so they look interesting, but uh, so we'll answer the second question first. So 
the Eigen value decomposition is used extensively in uh, the simulation in multiple communication algorithms and uh, as well as uh, it has a varied application to machine learning and data science. So, those applications will become clearer as we discuss them. So, right now it is good to keep in mind that there is something called the Eigen value decomposition and there are something called Eigen vectors wherever we apply them. So, after this wherever we apply these results, we will apply them directly. So, that is why we need to talk about Eigen values and Eigen vectors now. So, in order to answer the first question or we will answer the first question second that uh, how do we find the Eigen values and Eigen vectors of a matrix. So, classically or uh, using uh, a pen and a paper you see that ax minus or ax equal to lambda x this. So, basically minus lambda i times x equals 0. So, this x basically what we are saying is x lies in the null space of lambda i. So, find the lambdas and the bonding axis. So, one first part is to find a lambda such that a minus lambda i has a null space or a minus lambda i becomes rank deficient or the determinant of a minus lambda i is 0. So, you have to find lambda such that the determinant of a minus lambda i becomes 0. So, with this manually what you would do is, so manually what you would do is you try to solve for this determinant and solve this determinant get a in lambda the zeros of that polynomial correspond fine and this by plugging solving for x in a minus lambda i times x equals 0. So, this is the approach that uh, we follow for low order matrices like 3 times 3 or 2 times 2 or uh, if you are uh, good at bookkeeping maybe 4 times 4, but uh, uh, we run out of uh, patience very soon in this case because uh, the computational complexity of calculating a determinant and uh, the corresponding computational complexity of uh, solving a polynomial equation becomes uh, too large to handle easily. So, uh, behind the scenes MATLAB uses efficient, I will use an adjective here, numerical so you can look at uh, 
course on numerical methods to find out what these techniques are since uh, we will treat eigenvalues as a black box or we will say that uh, we want eigenvalues as a result not uh, as a goal unto themselves and uh, we won't spend more time on how MATLAB would uh, try to do this. So, numerical efficient MATLAB techniques to find these values fine and uh, how do we do this is so uh, note that uh, eigenvalues are valid only for square matrices or we can only find the eigenvalues of square matrices. So, let us say that there is a square matrix B equals this and I want the eigenvalues of the square matrix. So, I will use I of B gives me the eigenvalues of B. So, these are the eigenvalues of B that I wanted, but uh, what if I want the corresponding eigenvectors as well. So, to find out the corresponding eigenvectors as well, I will write it lambda comma u equals i of b and here. So, sorry u lambda, u and lambda this. So, u is the eigenvector matrix of B and uh, lambda are the corresponding eigenvalues. Please note that the entries of U are normalized. That is in MATLAB, equals eigenvalues of A or B gives So, A u 1 equals lambda 1 u 1 A lambda 1 to lambda n u 1 2 fine and a let me just correct this notation slightly and u 1 lambda n a u equals u lambda. So, pre multiplying both sides with u inverse I get u inverse a u equals lambda. This is one important result in case of eigenvalues and eigenvectors and we will demonstrate this right away in MATLAB or equivalently u lambda u inverse equals a. So, we will do both of these. So, MATLAB the inverse is say u i equals inverse of u and this fine. So, let us now try to demonstrate this. So, first u i times a times u and this should give us the eigenvector matrix or b. So, this gives me the eigenvalue matrix as expected and the next thing I do is this. So, I get the these uh, basic eigenvalue operations are verified and there are two more eigenvalue operations that I should talk about right now. So, the, the first is that uh, the product of the eigenvalues equals the determinant. So, let us use so lambda lowercase equals diag 
of lam. So, notice that uh, the variable names are case sensitive. So, what this diag command does is that if you give it a vector as an input, it constructs a diagonal matrix with the entries of that vector on the diagonals or if you give it a matrix then it extracts the diagonal entries of that matrix. So, I get uh, the eigenvalues in the form of a matrix and then I get the eigenvalues in the form of a vector and if I write try to find the product of lambda it will give me the product of uh, the entries of that vector and try to find the determinant of b find the determinant of b minus 4. So, one the product of the eigenvalues uh, equals the determinant of that matrix that property is verified. The second property that we will verify is that the trace of the matrix equals the sum of the eigenvalues, the trace of the matrix equals sum of the eigenvalues and which is 34 and which we can verify 1 plus 6 plus 27 is 34. So, the trace of the matrix equals the sum of the eigenvalues. So, these are the two basic properties that uh, the eigenvalues of a matrix satisfy and uh, before we go into more matrix operation. So, these are some examples. So, we will stop here and uh, next time we will look at uh, complex numbers, complex matrices and uh, how they are important uh, for us. Thank you.